Hey there, so welcome to the kitchen. I thought I would chat through with you a few of the seeds that I just went out and planted in the garden. I also got a little bit of a perfect um, late summer harvest. I fall harvest, I guess. We're still getting tomatoes. As you can see, I've got a bunch of these Juliet tomatoes some spoon tomatoes, which I finally just gave up and started harvesting like the whole <laughs> string of them. And then uh, a few better bush tomatoes that are still ripening and the pumpkins actually that I uh, harvested the other day, but I forgot to bring inside. I left them outdoors. Um, they did get rained on, but I think I can save them. Um, so now I'm just gonna bring them inside and let them cure, make sure that they're in a nice dry place turn them upside down, right side up a couple times. I don't know. I feel like I've read somewhere that that's supposed to help. And so now I've just always done it. Actually, this um, harvest basket is perfect for carrying um, pumpkins because they can kind of be up uh, off the, like any surface and they don't get too wet. But it is humid out there. It's still pretty hot. It's still pretty buggy. So I didn't even turn on my camera. I just ripped out the better bush plants. I actually ended up rip ripping out one of my foxgloves. It was covered in pests. I just cleaned it out and I went ahead and planted. And then I thought I would come in here and just go through with you the seeds that I planted, talk to you a little bit about planting them this time of year. And then I will go out actually in the morning probably, or at some point tomorrow and show you what the garden is looking like because it was a pretty significant change to pull out um, all the stuff that I did and just get the, the bed planted. I'm gonna go put these over on the counter. And my daughter is gonna be super excited to see all these spoon tomatoes in the morning. And let me grab the seeds that I just planted and we will talk through what I planted. Okay, got a chair. And here's my stack of seeds. So I planted these, um, these are all seeds in two two by four raised beds. I have um, these two kind of main raised beds that are not by the arch and they're really pretty good full sun beds. The one in the back gets a little bit of shade from the tree, but for this time of year, especially with the leaves gonna be falling soon, it's not really too big an issue. They should all be getting pretty much both full sun, which is great and they're on drip. So they're all set up um, for watering and everything. And I did plant them pretty full so i wanted to be um kind of aim for some decorative uh aspects to my plan this year so i actually did um pretty much like rows of different things so hopefully they'll be really pretty nice little little rows um and then i am going to pop in a few violas so i'm going to go get some started plants and get a few started violas for the back raised bed by the fence. Um, I just, I had half a piece of chicken wire, so I figured that was perfect for half, and I planted seeds underneath it, and then I just wanna go get some fresh um, started violas. My violas, I tried to start from seed. I did start them in July. They were doing really well, and they would have been ready to plant right now, but actually I had to go out of town, um, had some family stuff, and my husband was looking after the seeds, and he did a great job with a lot of my fall seeds, uh, but the violas that I started from seed didn't make it. So I'm gonna have to buy some violas uh, from the garden center, but I also did direct sow some. So I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. And then if you've been following along, you know I did start some fall plants and I've actually decided I'm gonna put those into my green stalks. So I have a bunch of collard greens and pak choy, there's green onions, mustards. I think I'm gonna use all of those in my green stock planter up on my patio because there's a lot of space in there that needs a lot of plants. And I figured it's still early enough in the season. So we're here in the second week of September. And I want to just kind of like make this space investment in my fall garden and pull out all of the plants that I could have kept going. I mean, I could have let those tomatoes go, I don't know, another week or so, but I decided to pull it out now, make the space, and hopefully these seeds will actually have a chance to really get going. Um, and maybe by, you know, end of October, be really up and, and, and growing. So in the back raised bed, I did, 
a few things. So along the back, I did some clumps, alternating clumps of Nero Toscano kale. So a really nice, just like hearty, um, typical kale. Most kales like this tend to be very frost um, hardy. And so I'm imagining that it's gonna actually winter over here in zone 7A where I am. Um, and it says that it is really good for tender baby greens, which is how I like to eat, eat most of my salad greens. So that should be really nice. And I can let, you know, some of it get big if I want for the winter, but I could also um, just harvest them as baby greens too. So I did a few clumps of those. And then in between the clumps of the kale, another really cold hardy fall crop. This is my um, Georgian Southern collards and um, it's supposed to be very cold tolerant. It's also supposed to be kind of heat tolerant. So I'm gonna be curious to watch how this does come spring. Unless we have some sort of absolutely crazy cold winter, this will winter over for me. My kale has always survived the winter, or not kale, my collards, my kale as well, but my collards especially have always dealt really well with the cold here. They've always wintered over. So I'm expecting that this will be a really good one and I'm just kind of curious to see I do have some of it started and that will go in the green stock but I'm curious to see what happens with direct sowing it um, and I will let these get bigger I like to use um, collard greens like I like to make like uh, collard green wraps with um, sausage and rice inside and different things like that typically bigger leaves so hopefully that'll be a good mix alternating the clumps of the kale and the collards and it'd also be pretty too with these two next to each other. Then down the middle of the bed, I planted sugar bond peas and these are a really cute dwarf variety pea. So they only get about one to two feet tall. So I don't have any kind of staking um, in the beds with them, but they are supposed to produce, it says, and I quote, mega yields <laughs> of crispy, crunchy, sweet peas, edible pods and peas. I have started a lot of different kinds of like these dwarf um, peas or the peas that don't need trellising. Not all of them produce what I would consider mega yields. A lot of times it's kind of just like, you know, a few for snacking and a few peas here. So I'm very interested to see what um, an early high yielder that's tidy and prolific. I mean, if that's not exactly what I want in my garden, <laughs> I don't know what is. Typically, I have had issues growing peas in the fall and I have not had the best results, but it says on here that you can grow them as a for a fall harvest. I'm excited as yeah, early high yield or tidy and prolific. I mean, it's just, yeah, that's exactly what I want. So I'm really, really excited about this one. I actually have really high hopes for it. And I may put a few more in some containers because I do like to do like the dwarf style peas in containers. That's often um, a really fun way to grow them and they usually do pretty well. And now I'll talk about the next bed, which I planted pretty densely, as, as I often do. So at one end, I have a coneflower. It's this really cute, like, yellow coneflower, and it's a pretty small plant right now, but it's going to be, you know, a perennial in that corner of the bed. So next to it, cutting off the short end of the bed so that there's just, like, it's going to be kind of like a perennial area, I decided to try a few, just a few, parsnips so you can sow them in the fall um and then you'll harvest them the following spring so these will be an all winter like growing all winter and then we'll harvest them in the spring but i don't know it's really like interesting it's as little as 95 days if you want to do this i believe in a like, sp like spring planting but delicious in stews or mashed roasted it's a sweet, wait till after the first frost to, to harvest for the sweetest parsnip. So in my case, since I'm planting in the fall, I'm gonna wanna harvest it before it gets too warm out. So it's something I'm gonna have to remember. But yeah, I always like those things that you plant in the fall and harvest in the spring where they bloom in the spring. It's just always kind of fun. And I've never grown parsnips, so I'm excited. So I kind of have this like perennial, like little square at the end of the bed that has the coneflower and now the parsnips. Um, and so that's kind of like my little experiment section. And then I did some rows of some greens and some violas. 
All right, so it is actually the next day um, and I'm gonna finish talking about these seeds. I got a little bit distracted with um, the kiddos and everything. It's been kind of hard to make these vlogs lately because there's always so much going on around here. Um, but we're doing it and we're talking seeds, which is my favorite thing. So in the front raised bed, I put in a bunch of greens and some violas. And the first one that I put in was a row of this Mizuna Red Streaks. So a really pretty mustard green. Mustard greens are very spicy. So personally, not my favorite thing to eat. I don't really like those super spicy greens, but they are really pretty. They add a really nice texture. They've got some of these like purples and greens, and they are one that the colder it gets, the more purple they will look. So they'll be nice along the back, hopefully throughout the winter, about 18 inches tall tall hopefully dark purple as it starts getting really cold and just be really beautiful um, and a fun texture and then just like a great texture a great look to add to salads and all of that and then in front of it I did a row of this uh, giant noble spinach. So I grew this spinach in the spring and I was really happy with it. It's supposed to be like not a stringy spinach. We've got the cats <laughs> running around here it's not a stringy spinach it has pretty good flavor but one of the things i'm excited about for about it is that it is um supposed to be really really cold hardy and i do hope that everything that i plant but especially some of these things will last all the way through the winter um totally winter over here and come up in the spring so hopefully we'll have both of these just all winter long and i think there'll be a pretty contrast to the kind of red and the green, um, they should do pretty well and they should be really cold hardy and they can continue to just take up space and really flesh out and be beautiful. Then I did a row, um, I'm really excited. Where did I put it? Oh, I don't have it here. Let me grab those seeds. I did a row of these historic florist mix pansies. And so I'm curious to see how it goes direct sewing them in um September here I don't know how long they'll really take to get flowering I assume by spring we will have flowers so this may be a little bit of an investment in the long game of the garden but um I've had such good luck starting them indoors other than this year and so I'm going to try some of them direct sown in the garden in the fall and they should there are perennial zones four to nine although they don't really handle my summers too well but they shouldn't be bothered at all by our heat because we're a zone seven so way above zone four um and yeah they're just really pretty I liked this mix a lot I grew it in the spring and it was it was really pretty then I did a row of slow bolt arugula one of my favorite arugula is just a really tried and true um arugula for me it's always grown pretty well um and it should do pretty well with the cold for me i have found that arugula is one of the fastest things to sprout i imagine this will be sprouting and growing and be big before anything else that i have here is really like getting big and getting to full size but i don't know that it's going to like overwinter the very coldest temperatures. I might end up like re sowing this in February. Um, I'm gonna kind of play around with that. I like to harvest these as baby greens. They do say that it's, I think, yeah, the young leaves that are about two to three inches long is the best flavor. So that's typically when I eat, th eat these. So this may be one that I just end up harvesting and then I figure the, the violas and pansies on either side will kind of just like fill in and take over once I harvest all the arugula. So this is definitely for a fall harvest, but I have arugula that came up in like two days out there in the garden. And so I imagine that this one will be up and looking great within just a couple days. That should be a really um, great one to have. And then on the other side of that, I did some pansies. These are the chicky, chicky chicks. So a really pretty mix of pansies. And I'm just kind of curious to see how um, how they do too. They're really beautiful. These are a little bit more cold tender. So they're zone six through nine. So we'll kind of see, uh, but they're just like so cute and should be really fun. And again, we're just trying to see like what kind of growth we can get in the beginning of the season here um, in the fall and then see if they can kind of do some flowering over the winter. I am gonna go to the garden center and get some starts for violas. And so depending on how they germinate in their, their rows, I may add in a couple starts from the garden center too, just if I feel like I wanna have a little bit fuller display, but they should be really pretty. 
be quiet. My little girl cat is so loud. If you hear her purring in the background. Then I did some corn, just have a couple of containers, some corn salad. This is a really cute low salad green. It has a lot of vitamins and it's a really good, like this was, was I, we had a really cold snap last winter and this was one of the only things that made it through the cold snap. It absolutely handled all of that really well. Um, it's harvest the biggest leaves off the sides and it, um, it does really well. So those are the seeds that I put <laughs> in those garden beds. And this evening I will take you down there and show you how it is looking. And then we will talk next steps of planting. Um, so let's go see the garden. All right, so we are down in the garden and I just wanted to share with you how these two beds are looking. This is where we have all of the rows of seeds. As I said, pretty densely planted. Um, but I just I have these on top of it right now because I actually have some landscape stakes coming, staples, uh, because the squirrels have already figured out they got into one of these containers and actually flipped up the chicken wire. So I have like a couple of things on here to try to hold it down. If you hear that noise in the background, got some neighbor kids that are <laughs> making a little noise out here, but a beautiful fall evening and I will get some landscape staples and just make sure I staple this all down and then hopefully everything will come up and grow through. So we've got the pansies, the spinach, the mizuna and the corn salad arugula in this bed. And then we've got the peas back there as well as the collard greens and the kale. Um, and I just watered everything so it's a little wet. I do need to come in and do probably another layer of mulch in between the beds. So a few more things to get the full fall garden looking all set. But it feels good to have this planted. I really um, was feeling like I really needed to get that done in order to have these beds really be producing as we move into um, the next season here. So I'm excited to watch everything come up. As you saw in these containers that I planted just a couple days ago, things are already sprouting. Look at that, you can already even see the arugula. It is so amazing how fast it all grows. So pretty soon, and there's the lettuce just already looking so much bigger. Pretty soon there's gonna be lots of things sprouting in here. So that will be really fun to see all that start to come up. And as always, I will keep you posted. I've got a lot of cleanup happening. I'm gonna tackle the tomato arch and planting the other two raised beds next. So stay tuned for that. And um, thank you so much. I will talk to you again soon. Bye.